all right so i kind of have to apologize I hadn't been making any videos in a little while but i want to start back uh, the problem last april i quit making videos my computer crashed didn't really have a way to process them and we had a lot of stuff going on on the farm with getting new horses getting some new cows i had uh, to finish fencing in 36 acres along with running the bees i really just didn't have the time to make a lot of videos so now that things have calmed down a little bit i want to try to start making some so i've got some new feeders here that i've built and i'm trying out uh, and it's an open style feeder it's very similar to the way ian stippler does his on the canadian beekeepers blog and i'll put a link to that down in the description and i want to kind of go through what i used and um, all the tools and the things i used how i built mine and kind of break down what he did as a canadian because he likes to use a lot of uh terminology that americans don't understand because we we don't use leaders we go based off of gallons and i've not actually looked in these feeders yet um so i don't know how my drowning situation was so we're going to kind of go through all of that stuff together okay so here is the feeder that i actually built and kind of modded, modeled it off of ian's feeder um, ian says that he likes to in canada use a 90 liter tote and 90 liters in gal and uh, gallons is roughly 23 gallons so i found this tote at lowe's hardware it's actually a 27 gallon tote and it was eleven dollars and 98 cents at my local lowe's now what I did with that is I put four holes on the side just like his and those holes measure two and three quarter inches. Now I had this hole saw uh, for my cordless drill that was two and three quarter inches already so that's what I used. Probably doesn't matter if you do a little bit bigger or a little less but I had this because this uh, hole size is supposed to fit a regular size mason jar. So if you think about uh, building tops or queen castles and you want to invert a mason jar feeder and put it in a hole, they recommend the two and three quarter size. So that's what I had for that reason. And so I used it here as well. So I put the four holes on that side. I put the four holes on this side. You may be able to see I have another blue tote over here done the same way. This is a little bit weaker tote. It's not as rigid. But this one is the one that if I'm going to feed pollen uh, and open feed pollen, then I put my pollen in here to keep it dry. And the same concept, the bees go in and then they, they come out. So I did basically what Ian does. I had some old pallet uh, wood behind my barn. I measured the bottom of the tote uh, lengthwise and I cut those boards to where they would fit perfectly in the bottom with very little wiggle room and then i have three boards in here two wide ones one narrow one to where when it when those boards sit in the bottom i don't have but about an inch maybe two inches of room uh, so when the bees come down in here they have some floats to sit on and drink now on ian's video he does recommend that he puts out ten, uh, one of these totes for every 10 hives. So what does that mean for us? Well, if you figure there are 20 gallons, uh, there's 23 gallons in one of his containers, he recommends filling it half full. So you're putting 11, 11 and a half gallons of water in one of these for every 10 hives. It breaks down to what he's recommending is feeding basically one gallon per hive of feed is what he's putting out there and he says he's putting this out there because it uh, gives yourself or gives the bees a lot more room and reduces the fighting now i haven't looked in here yet to see what the drowning is but i have two of these totes and we'll go look at the other one and at this location i have roughly 20 hives so i put two of these out now what i did was uh i mixed my sugar water I don't buy sucrose like um, he does and the big guys do. I have to make my own. And my favorite ratio of sugar water is what I call a one and a half to one ratio. Um, one and a half to one is a little bit cheaper than two to one. It's definitely easier to mix. Um, I see that the bees store it just fine. They have no problem storing it. And, and it lasts uh, longer in one of these feeders than say a one to one does. 
So it mixes really, really easy. That's my favorite. And so the way I mix my one and a half to one is I take a five gallon bucket, I put two gallons of water in that five gallon bucket, and then I put a 25 pound bag of sugar, which is our uh, readily available in this area at Walmart and a lot of the grocery stores you uh, can put a 25 pound and if you do that I mix it in my kitchen I have enough room in the top of the bucket where I can still mix it easily without sloshing water all over the floor and making a mess that I have to clean up if I try to put three gallons in there then it, you just get so close to the rim of the bucket that you can't actually mix it without that so when I did these feeders I mixed up four buckets with the two gallons of water and a 25 pound bag of sugar in each. I put two buckets in this uh, this tote, which is, would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 gallons of water. And I put two buckets in the other. So I put out 16 to 20 gallons of sugar water uh, between the two feeders. I put those out on Monday morning, um, before the, right when the sun was coming up, it was still cool. And you're talking, this is, the, uh, this is the beginning of February. Um, today's February 8th, so that would have been February 2nd or 3rd. And by Tuesday afternoon, within two days, we've had some warm weather, they, dra they drained both of these feeders. So it, it seemed to work really well. I actually uh, inspected a lot of my hives on Tuesday, and those hives were really packing in the sugar water. I don't have to really worry about them drowning any time between in February and March because of that. But let's uh, let's get you a little bit closer. Let's open these up and see how the drowning went. <coughs> okay, so right off the bat, I do see some drowned bees right here on the top. It's not very many. Now, another trick to this, take some hay and put a little bit of hay on top of these boards. It just gives the bees something else to land on and keep them from drowning. So we're going to pull this hay out of here. And there are a little bit of bees there. Maybe a, I don't even know if that's quite a handful. Maybe a handful. And you can see how I've got my boards cut. There's a little gap here, a little bit here, not much in the middle. some of the straw out and there's not a lot um, there's not a lot of drowning I'd say in this feeder probably two or three handfuls of bees and for me that's not anything that I'm really concerned about uh, for this feeder or the other feeder but we'll take a look at the other one to see how it did um, like I say I've got 20 hives in this yard and when I I mean when you talk about 20 hives, they're 20 packed hives. Um, anytime, you know, 16 to 20 gallons of sugar water is a lot of sugar water. And for 20 hives, I'm sure there's a few wild hives around here, but I don't think my neighbors have a lot of hives. There might be three or four around here, but for 20 hives to take down 16 to 20 gallons of sugar water in early February, that's pretty significant. That should just that should uh, speak to how strong they are, and to have just maybe two or three handfuls of bees in this feeder, um, I'm not going to complain about that at all. I think that's great. Okay, so here's our other high, uh, feeder. We'll check it out and see how it did. Okay, so this one I don't see any ground of bees on the top, but I know there's probably some here at the bottom. Pull the straw out here. It's kind of short. Okay, pull these boards out. Okay, and so this one has even less uh, ground of bees. This feeder has less than it's less than a handful. I mean, here's the straw. You can see some bees here and there, but this one has less than a handful of bees. Um, I normally feed at the other feeder, so there was probably a lot more bees at that feeder when I initially started to feed. 
uh, and it probably took some time for the bees over here to find it that could have played a part in it um, you know because it would have kind of been like me only putting out one feeder uh, it had been one feeder for like 20 hives there for a while until the hives found this one over here and then it was more like two feeders I don't know if I said that right so it had kind of been like uh, one feeder for 20 hives instead of two feeders for 20 hives or one for 10 so yeah I, um, I really like this method now I know that a lot of people don't like open feeding um, a lot of people frown on it but once you get up to a certain number of hives it just becomes really really hard um, and you can't really feed bees in the winter time inside the hive or on top of the hive open feeding is just really convenient for me so you guys can send me the hate mail if you want to i know some people probably will about open feeding and that's fine but um but i really like this method and to only have you know maybe three handfuls of bees or so uh drowned but me be able to feed 16 to 20 gallons of syrup to 20 hives you know and basically still in the winter time or in really 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 early spring uh, that's a big win for me and i'll take it so that was just a quick video of how we're feeding our bees right now uh, if you liked our videos please feel free to subscribe we love to see the subscription numbers going up we love getting all the new views we're going to be posting a lot more videos now that i've got my computer back up and going and things have settled down on the farm a little bit uh, we have a facebook page if you're interested in checking that out um, we've been doing some inspections um, i like to do early inspections to see how the bees are doing see which bees are coming out of the winter strong uh, we did place some pollen patties on the beginning of january so we're looking to see who eat the pollen, pollen patties who didn't who's growing who's not strength now versus the strength in a month or two so we can narrow down our uh, hives that we're going to select for queen rearing uh, our facebook page like i say is browns beef and bees it there's some links on uh on our youtube channel but you can probably find it on facebook as well and like i say this is just one way that we uh that i've tried and i really really like and i think it may benefit some people um, we're in zone seven in cleveland county north carolina so you can kind of take that information and compare it to your area and kind of uh, how your weather is and you can look at some of our hives on there in those pictures that I posted you can see kind of how strong they are um, you know a lot of our hives are a high body and a super and they're packed full of bees um, I was adding about 75 percent of my boxes or my hives got an empty box added to them uh, just this week the first week in February so when I here's my color. so when I say they're strong and they're taking the sugar water I mean it, they really are strong and they're taking the sugar water. So you guys have a good one and uh, be looking out for some more videos to come.